Good afternoon, everybody. This is Judy Gatson in our WIS First Alert studio with really uh, dramatic developments, breaking uh, news today in a case that we have been following now uh, for more than a decade. It involves a woman who disappeared out of thin air um, more than 13 years ago, and her disappearance was connected. Authorities always thought it was connected to another case right here in the Midlands. So let me back up and, and give you an idea of how this all unfolded in our newsroom today as we've been covering this story. Last week in a sand pit, a landfill in the Richland Northeast area here in Columbia, authorities discovered human remains. And anytime that happens, obviously in the newsroom, we think about missing persons cases. Of course, it could be a brand new case that we had not even heard of. But in this instance, we immediately started looking back to see which cases were unsolved. We were waiting to get new information from authorities. And we were hearing that it could be connected to a case that we had covered some time ago. So over the course of the last week, authorities have been ex excavating really uh, what was described as a shallow grave where these human remains were found, where bones were found. Uh, in the northeast part of Richland County. And it's a huge area. We've got some video from that scene. One of our reporters, Naomi Popa, has been on this story today. Derek Rush is joining our live team coverage. But they've been out there talking to investigators and anthropologists brought in, obviously after the remains being there for so long, um, some real forensic work required to identify these remains. So we were in our newsroom today in the middle of an editorial meeting when the coroner held her news conference on Friday afternoon to reveal the fact that the remains have been identified of a woman named Adriana Laster. And that name immediately rung a bell in our newsroom because we remembered this case so vividly from back in 2012. It was that long ago when we first heard her name. And it was in connection with the search for a local teenager who had been missing. So let me take you back to August of 2012 a teenager by the name of Gabby Swainson was missing. There was a search all over Northeast Richland County for Gabby. What happened to Gabby? She was at her home, mysteriously disappeared. Some of her things were left behind. It did not meet the requirements for an Amber Alert. That was a bit of a controversy at the time uh, because obviously it's a young girl, it's a teenager who's missing um, under suspicious circumstances to say the least. But there was a search and law enforcement amplified that search. Um, search parties organized by the family went out, searched all over the area, trying to piece together clues in Gabby's disappearance. Well, ultimately, a man named Freddie Grant admitted to kidnapping and murdering Gabby. And he was arrested in connection with some weapons charges. There was a deal made. Um, there were a lot of complicating factors in that case. But the point being that when Freddie Grant was identified as a suspect in Gabby's case, investigators all along thought he was a suspect in the disappearance of Adriana Lester. So when we think about what we've learned about Adriana's case years ago, when authorities were investigating, trying to make a connection to Freddie Grant, one thing they told us was that the last person she was seen with was Freddie Grant. They told us that she had been in a relationship with Freddie Grant and was living with him. Apparently the relationship started uh, in Miami and she moved to Columbia with him. According to her sister who talked to us at the time about her sister's disappearance, she said that her sister, that Adriana told her that Freddie Grant beat her. There are multiple reports with the Elgin Police Department accusing Grant of pouring fuel on Adriana while she was in her car, banging her head against a brick wall at his house, a whole other list of injuries. But investigators were never able to get concrete evidence to connect Freddie Grant to Adriana's disappearance until today. And that is when they revealed that the bones, the remains that were discovered in this sand pit have been identified as Adriana Laster. And so according to Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott, Freddie Grant is now going to be charged in this case. We're checking with the solicitor's office. We'll have the latest on that on WIS. But it is just um, chilling to think after all of this time. And I can't help but think about her family. Uh, her sister was quoted as saying that after her sister's disappearance, every night she would lay down wondering if her sister was okay, wondering if her sister was alive, wondering if her sister would make her way home. And she says that she kept playing their last conversation in her head over and over again, asking her sister to just come home. 
Um, we're working to make contact with her family. When we were working on this case a number of years ago, her sister lived out of state, so we haven't been able to make contact with her just yet. Obviously, before releasing this information to the media, the authorities have been in contact with her family. And, um, you know, there's really nothing that can mend a grieving heart, but you have to just hope that this discovery, this official confirmation of these remains gives them some measure of peace, some measure of closure. And on WYS, the Richland County Coroner is going to be doing an extensive one-on-one -on -one interview with us to talk about the forensics of this case. They're still excavating that landfill, by the way, to just make sure they have collected all of the evidence. And as you look at the pictures of the landfill in the area that has now become a crime scene, um, you can see what a massive project that is for them. So the coroner is going to walk us through that. We'll be sure to share that content with you as well, but to talk about the work that her investigators have done. Uh, during the news conference early Friday afternoon, she talked about the fact that they've had to work in very difficult elements uh, in the Richland County and Columbia area. We've had very cold weather, we've had very rainy weather. So it has been a complicated task to say the least for the recovery of these remains. And they want to make sure that they have gone through that area with a fine tooth comb. And according to one of our reporters earlier, the area where these remains were found was in what has been described as a shallow grave. We're gonna get some clarification from the coroner when we speak with her in our one-on-one -on -one interview, but about the forensic process that was involved in 13 years later, being able to make a positive ID in terms of uh, the identity of these human remains and finally bringing some closure to this case that has been a mystery in our community for so long. We're also told that the Elgin Police Department, Elgin, for those of you who are not from this area, it's a small community, it's a very close-knit community. S strangers showed up to search for Gabby and even for Adriana, you know, and people who lived near Freddie Grant, where Freddie Grant and Adriana lived. Neighbors back then told us that they reached out and tried to help in some way. And, um, you know, domestic violence has for a long time been such a serious issue here in South Carolina and it's so complicated um, when you're reaching out you know and wanting to help someone get out of an abusive situation and there's so many mitigating factors one of them being that according to the Elgin Police Department when she filed when Adriana filed uh, these police reports against Freddie Grant uh, according to investigators she was three months pregnant so obviously um, just a lot of emotions in play, a lot of extenuating circumstances that may have played into her decision um, not to accept those offers for help or to maybe just feel like she couldn't. Um, it's hard to know what was in her mind at the time, but um, we certainly are hoping that her family, just knowing um, that they have some measure of closure uh, is bringing them some measure of peace tonight. It's really hard to kind of reconcile in our own minds that a case that we've been following for so long to have these breaking uh, developments today, such dramatic developments today, um, knowing that it is connected to a case that we have been covering for more than a decade. Uh, much more to come on this story. We just wanted to really kind of give you the big picture overview of, of how this all unfolded within the last week leading up to today to the coroner's news conference to be able to make this connection to uh, this other case. We will have details about the additional charges against Freddie Grant. We will have more details about the discovery, what has been collected uh, at the sand pit in terms of evidence so far, how long that operation will last, and the forensic process that the coroner's office has gone through to make this positive identification and how that is all going to come together to make the case now 13 years later against Freddie Grant in the disappearance and the death of Adriana Laster. So that is the latest from the WIS First Alert News Center. I'm Judy Gatson. Keep it tuned to WIS TV, to all of our platforms for the latest on this story. As we get new information, we will certainly keep you updated and uh, hoping to have reaction from her family as well and certainly new information as we get it from investigators. Thanks for joining us this afternoon and more news as it comes on WISTV.com.